Today we're going to take a look at the anatomy of a gauge. How does it work? There's pressure gauges and there's vacuum gauges. You would think that internally they're going to be different, right? We're going to find out together, coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to explore these gauges. And this one here was a donor yesterday, and it's a vacuum gauge. And usually vacuum gauges don't go wrong, but every once in a while you will notice that they are miscalibrated. And once they're miscalibrated, it is no longer usable. Like this one right here. You can see that on this striker, really old manual vacuum system, the gauge is not going to zero. There might be, some things that we can do to solve that problem but for the most part you change out the gauge and what do you do with that old one well if you're me you're gonna make videos <laughs> so this is a cool one anyway almost all gauges have pretty similar anatomy when it comes to taking them apart there are fasteners on the back you can see them right here and once you take out the two fasteners that pretty much loosens the internals from the outer casing and once you take those two out there should be a little notch, which this one is right here. Take a little flathead screwdriver, pop it in there, and take off the face of the gauge. And then the internals come right out. And you have to be really delicate because you can see how sensitive it really is. Now this is the vacuum gauge. These two here are pressure gauges. And what you guys should be aware of is that there is a bladder that goes around the periphery. You see that? how it's a C shape and it is hollow on the inside. And what happens when you apply a vacuum, what it does is it wants to decrease its circumference and that will make this guy here decrease its size. You see that? And that makes the vacuum go up. Kind of cool. So you can see there's just a catch pawl that's attached to the end is calibrated based on what tooth the gauge is on. So you can actually adjust the zero point by adjusting what tooth it's on. It is not easy, but it can be done. So as you increase vacuum, it decreases the size of the C because it's hollow and it increases the meter on the gauge. So that is vacuum. Let's take a look at the pressure. Okay, uh, so one of the things I'm taking a look at on the pressure is how many PSI the gauge goes up to. This one goes up to 60. This one looks like it goes up to 200 PSI. We're going to open up both of these and take a look because perhaps the anatomy is going to be different on a 16 PSI gauge versus a 200 PSI gauge. Okay, I already got the fasteners out. Ooh, look at that. Okay. It is almost exactly the opposite. It does have a bladder, and you can see right here that there's some corrosion internally. And for this one, as it inflates the bladder, it makes it want to stand out straight. So as it wants to stand out straight, it pulls on the pawl instead of depressing it. And that is what makes your meter go up. See that? Although it takes a lot more force for a pressure gauge than for a vacuum gauge. I guess it's taking a lot more force for me to make this needle go up. Well, let's take a look at this guy right here. This one goes up to 200 PSI. Wow, and those fasteners are in there too. Wow, holy cow. Guys, I'm pretty good with a screwdriver and this thing is beating my butt. It's like they put them in with Loctite. Jeez, who uses Loctite anymore? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. You all know I support Loctite. Let's see. Oh, there we go. How about I get away from the precision screwdrivers and get some torque on it? Okay. And this face is a little bit different. This one here is a... Um, press on face which means 
it's going to be a pain to get out, I bet. This guy is on really good. There. Just the right amount of love. If you guys ever do have defective gauges, save the faceplate. This guy right here. All of these will get saved because we have all seen broken gauges where they just crack the face. And it's simple. All you got to do is take the faceplate off, take the lens, pop a new one on, save those. Okay. And just to think, this guy here is a vacuum gauge and it's the inverse. They take that same C-shaped bladder and it compresses it. And you can see that Paul right there rocking back and forth. And this one here only has to go to negative 30 inches of mercury. You can only get so much vacuum. And the maximum vacuum you can get is one atmosphere. One atmosphere is negative 14, it's 14.2 or 14.5 PSI, something like that. So one atmosphere is the most vacuum that you can have, which is why the gauge only goes to negative 30 inches of mercury. And that is because once you evacuate all the air, the molecules are so far spaced apart and there's basically no pressure. Pressure is the uh, compression of a lot of atoms in one little space, whereas vacuum is the removal and it's actually here. Uh, I'm at sea level and I'm at 14 point something PSI. So when you remove all the atoms in that space, you have 14.5 PSI worth of pressure that's squeezing in on something. And that's what you consider vacuum. It's the absence of air. So it takes very little pressure to make this needle go all the way to max. It takes a lot of pressure to get these guys to move. I mean, it's actually indenting my finger. See that? Wow. It actually hurts. So anyway, guys, I thought you'd appreciate that. The anatomy of some gauges and how they function. Pretty simple, and I'm actually very surprised that vacuum is the exact inverse of pressure. I figured there was going to be a little more magic inside it than that, but there's not. That's all it is. Thanks for watching, guys.